In this tutorial we will be discussing different ways to connect, or mount, a Microsoft Share from Linux. Before we dive in I think it is important to understand the different terminology used when talking about Samba, SMB and CIFS shares. SMB server message block is a protocol used for network file sharing. It was originally designed at IBM in the 1980s. CIFS Common Internet File System is an implementation of SMB that was created by Microsoft. Samba is an open source software suite and set of utilities used by Unix, Linux to communicate with Microsoft Windows systems. From the average user standpoint, SMB and CIFS can be used interchangeably. As you will see below, we will connect to the same share using both SMB and CIFS. You can easily connect to a Windows share using the files application, formerly known as Nautilus, that ships with GNOME. For the sake of clarity, we will call it Nautilus. Open the Nautilus application and select other location from the left places panel. At the bottom of the screen you will see connect to server with a box asking for you to enter the server address. Inside that box is a diamond with a question mark in it that you can click for some help. As you can see in the pop-up, server addresses are made up of a protocol prefix and an address. On my Windows machine named my Muse I created a share called Shared Docs. So let's use those parameters to mount the share. This will bring up a dialog box asking for authentication credentials. Select the registered user radio button and enter your details. You have three options for storing your password. Forget password immediately. This will log you in and as soon as your session is over you will be required to provide your credentials again. Remember password until you log out. Remember your password until you explicitly log out. Remember forever. This option will store the credentials and allow you to easily return to the share. Once you are connected, Nautilus will show the location on the left panel allowing easy access to the share. Be aware that once that connection is closed you will have to go back to other locations and use the drop down box to reconnect. If you want to make the share persistently accessible from the left menu you will need to add a bookmark. To add a bookmark, connect to the share then right click it in the left panel and select add bookmark. If you have a lot of shares, or multiple shares on the same device, it will be hard to differentiate them. You can rename them to something more user-friendly by right-clicking on the bookmark and selecting Rename. Now we can easily navigate to our share as the name is clearly visible and easy to identify. You can easily mount a CIFS share from the command line using the mount CIFS command. Creating mount point in the MNT directory and using the mount command requires root privileges. Here we will be switching to root, but it is recommended that you use sudo. First, create a directory to mount the share, this is called a mount point. Use the mount CIFS command to mount the share at the created directory. We need to pass it our credentials as well as some other information. You can also leave out the password and you will get a prompt asking for your password. For security purposes you should never type your passwords on the command line. Now we can change to the directory we just mounted and see our files. You can add your CIFS mount point in Etsy FS tab and have the system mount it during boot. However, there are some considerations to make. If the share is not available at boot time the system will hang until the mount attempt times out, or worse, refuse to boot. This will cause a delay in accessing the system. To avoid this you can use auto FS which we will discuss in the next section. Also mounting it via F stab requires you to put your credentials somewhere in plain text. You have two options when using FSTAB to mount a CIFS share. 1. Put the credentials in the FSTAB file itself, this is a huge security risk as FSTAB is readable by any user. Someone can simply cat the file and see your credentials. It is not recommended. 2. Use a credentials file, this entails saving your credentials in a separate file which can then be protected by permissions. Although your credentials will still be saved in plain text, someone would need root permissions to read them. Because of the high risk of the first option, we will not even discuss how to do it. 
It is easy enough to use a credentials file. Let's create a credentials file to get started. First, create a hidden file in root's home directory, slash root. You can call this file whatever you like. Most people call it .smb creds or similar. In this file you need two lines, one containing username equals your username, and one containing password equals your password. Now set the permissions so it is only readable by root by using chmod 400. Now edit the Etsy F stab file and add the following information, remote server share address, local mount point, file system type, credentials file, dump option, and check option. Now the share will be mounted on boot, or anytime using the mount minus a command. Most systems do not come with AutoFS installed. You can easily install AutoFS and CIFS utils packages with most package managers. The most obvious benefit of using AutoFS is that the share is only mounted when being accessed. If it is unavailable it will not affect your system when it boots. Using AutoFS has the same credentials issues described above with fstab. It is also necessary to store your password in plain text when using AutoFS for CIFS shares. First, ensure you have your credentials file as described above. Don't forget to set the permissions. Now, let's get our user account's user ID so we can tell AutoFS to mount the share as our user instead of root. Edit the Etsy auto.master configuration file. In this file we will provide a map of directories to shares for AutoFS to use. The first part of this line is the directory we are using as a mount point. The second is the file that AutoFS should look in for instructions on how to connect to the resource and mount it. Next edit or create the Etsy auto.shared docs file and add the information for the share and connection parameters. This is similar to the Etsy fstab file. The first entry on the line is our mount point followed by some parameters like file system type, rw to mount it read write, the location of our credentials file, the uid to be used and finally the location of the share we want to mount. Once these files are updated, we are ready to restart the service and verify that it works. Now, let's look in the MNT directory. It shows that it is empty. This is because the shared docs directory doesn't exist until you try to access it. If everything above was followed, we should be to CD into that directory even though we do not see it. The directory will be dynamically created as it is accessed. In this article we covered three different ways to mount your Windows shares in Linux. You should now be able to mount an SMB share via the GUI, manually on the command line, automatically on boot and with AutoFS. An important point I would like to stress is make sure you protect your credentials. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, if so please subscribe and follow us on Twitter or Facebook.